Hey guys, it's Max with Apple Insider and welcome to my 6 month review of the iPhone X. From release right up to this month's earning announcement, analysts said that Apple will discontinue the phone this year due to low sales. The iPhone X has recently been named the best selling smartphone in the world in the first quarter of 2018, with iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus and iPhone 7 Plus behind it. It's now around 6 months after the iPhone X's release, so let's take a look at what made the flagship smartphone such a success. Since the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus share much of the same new features as iPhone 10, what made it so special? Here are three reasons for this. Although most of us wouldn't like to admit it, owning Apple's top of the line $1,000 iPhone 10 is a fashion statement. You're showing the world that you can afford the most expensive mass market smartphone available, and thanks to the iPhone 10's notorious notch and large vertical line camera bump, it's never been so easy to spot an iPhone 10, even from a distance. Second, the iPhone 10 boasts the biggest design changes ever seen in any iPhone, moving from the conventional rectangular LCD screen to a full-face OLED display with a notch, as well as being the first iPhone ever to remove the home button completely. Many users just want something new and different from previous iPhones, and that's exactly what the iPhone 10 offers. The final reason is the brand new exclusive software. The X's true depth camera system now allows for Face ID and other software like portrait selfie mode, portrait lighting, and an emoji. You also get things like tap to wake and the new home bar which allows for quicker app switching. Touch ID worked perfectly more often than Face ID, which has trouble when laying in bed or when it's at an odd angle, but in most cases it's so much more convenient than Touch ID. It just works so easily and being able to log into apps and use Safari autofill is well worth it. Overall, Face ID has improved over time. Between software updates and training, Face ID is quicker and more accurate than when I first got it. After 6 months, there are a lot more third party apps that support Face ID like Bank of America, PayPal, Credit Karma and so much more, so it's already making my life easier outside of the Apple ecosystem. Apple has also applied for a patent that would allow Face ID to scan the pattern of veins in a user's face as another form of authentication. If the two systems were used together, this would potentially make it almost impossible to fool, even with twins. The iPhone X's home bar and device specific gestures are extremely useful, it's never been so easy to switch between apps on an iPhone. I find myself rarely having to open the app switcher to switch to another app. Going back to any other iPhone was difficult since you have to bring up the app switcher to switch between apps and the rest of the iPhone 10 gestures including tapping the screen wake the device are gone. Wireless charging has gotten to be more convenient and useful than we thought it would when it was first released. We work in an office setting which is perfect for wireless charging, we pretty much leave work every day with a 100% charged battery. The iPhone X along with the iPhone 8 now support wireless charging at 7.5 watts versus 5 and fast charging when plugged in as well. But you don't get a fast charger in the box, you still get Apple's old and slow 5 watt charger that's been shipping with iPhones for years. For fast charging you'll need to purchase Apple's USB-C to lightning cable and use a USB-C PD charger like the ones included with MacBooks, which aren't cheap but you'll get a 50% charge from dead in only 30 minutes. Honestly, it's a bit disappointing when you pay $1000 for a phone and it comes with the slowest charger you could probably find these days. But there are rumors of a new 18 watt USB-C wall charger that will ship with the next generation phones due this fall. If it's true, either a USB-C to lightning cable will be included or next gen iPhones may be equipped with USB-C charging ports. Performance wise, the iPhone X still tops the charts compared to the newest phones like the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Although the S9 Plus beats it in some tests due to having more RAM, overall the iPhone X is still more powerful. When I first got my iPhone X and compared the screen to the iPhone 8 Plus, I could instantly see the difference in color, contrast and brightness between the old LCD and the new OLED displays. Now, 6 months later, I can say that it will be extremely hard to go back to an LCD equipped smartphone, it just doesn't look the same. There is however a downside to OLED screens, the color shift when looking at it at an odd angle is very real, and I noticed it the first day I had the iPhone X. It's obviously not an issue if you're using your phone like you normally would, but you start noticing it when the iPhone X is laying flat on a table or if you're showing something to a friend. Despite that, the iPhone X's display is truly remarkable, and don't just take my word for it. The iPhone X won the Display Applications of the Year category at the 23rd Display Industry Awards, being celebrated as the first in the product line to fulfill the vision of a smartphone that is entirely screen with no physical elements, keyboards or dedicated function buttons. The committee said that the iPhone X's 5.8 inch Super Retina display is the first OLED panel to match the standard set by prior iPhone generations. They praised its striking colors, true black shades, million to one contrast ratio and HDR support for Dolby Vision and HDR10. There's still a lot of controversy over the X's notch, some hate it and some say they won't buy one because of it. What we do know for sure is that the iPhone X sparked an increasingly growing amount of Android smartphones coming equipped with notches. Many of these phones don't even pack any kind of new technology that would make use of a notch. In my personal opinion, if you're holding your phone upright, which you should be doing most of the time, it shouldn't really bother you at all. 
The only time it bothers me is when you're watching videos in landscape mode. The longer aspect ratio means 16x9 videos crop in when watching in full face mode, so it could make tightly framed videos distracting to watch. After 6 months, most if not all third party apps I use now support the new aspect ratio, since Apple is requiring all app updates to support the iPhone X display. I'd have to say that the iPhone X is hands down the best iPhone ever made, and in my opinion the best smartphone ever made, due to the true depth camera system which supports years of new facial recognition software. So let's say you're considering upgrade to an iPhone X. If your current phone is still functional, I would definitely recommend waiting until September when Apple's new lineup of phones gets released. There's rumors of cheaper model options that will have the same full face design as the 10, and who knows what Apple has in store for the top of the line model. Leave a comment below letting us know what you think Apple's next generation iPhone lineup will look like this September. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.